You know, it doesn't surprise me that sales of the Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged have surged lately with the Obama administration coming in. Uh, because it's that kind of thinking, that kind of writing that is sorely needed right now. And I think a lot of people would observe that we are right now living in an Ayn Rand novel, metaphorically speaking. But more to the point is this. The issue that is under assault, the attack on democratic capitalism, on individualism and freedom in America, is an attack on the moral foundation of America. And Ayn Rand, more than anyone else, did a fantastic job of explaining the morality of capitalism, the morality of individualism. And this, to me, is what is matters most. It is not enough to say that President Obama's taxes are too big or the health care plan doesn't work for this or that policy reason. It is the morality of what is occurring right now and how it offends the morality of individuals working toward their own free will to produce, to achieve, to succeed that is under attack. And it is that what I think Ayn Rand would be commenting on, which we need that kind of comment more and more. And today, the average Fortune 500 company, uh, some are great corporate citizens, some are great uh, employers, but they don't have to be, and that's certainly not how they're judged. And that may account for the fact that where uh, a, a previous CEO of a company might have made 50 times the average wage of the worker, they might now make a thousand times or two thousand times. And, and, and that's now accepted practice inside the corporate boardroom. Now that's not because they're bad people, it's just that they have been freed from a certain set of social constraints. And those values have changed. Uh, and sometimes tax policy has encouraged that. And government policy has encouraged that. And there's a whole literature that justifies that as, well, that's what you need to get the best CEO, and they're bringing the most value. And then you do tip into a little bit of Ayn Rand, <laughs> which, Arthur, I think you'd be the first to acknowledge, because, you know, I'm, I'm in dinners with some of your buddies, you know, and I have <laughs> conversations with them. And if, if they're not on a panel, they'll say, you know what? We, we created all this stuff, and we made it, and we're creating value, and, and you know, we, we, we should be able to make decisions about where it goes. So there's less commitment to those public goods, even though a good economist who's read Adam Smith's uh, uh, moral sentiments uh, would acknowledge that actually we're underinvesting, or at least we have to have a certain investment. So that's point number one. I am a big fan of Ayn Rand. I've read all of her novels, and she actually spurred me on to other books that I was interested in. I never met Ayn Rand. I think my father may have met her one time but didn't know her closely, but always enjoyed her novels. But no, I was not named after Ayn Rand, although I do have a great deal of respect for her. So I've always thought it quaint and, and rather touching that there is in America a movement that thinks that people are not yet selfish enough. And um, I've met some of its supporters. They call themselves objectivists. And I've debated with them, but I've never got to the bottom of that problem. They think that really... America is a society already rotten with too much socialism and compassion. And it's just so refreshing to meet people who managed to get through their day actually believing that. The ad Last week, Donald Trump likened himself to an Ayn Rand protagonist, going on to say the novel Fountainhead relates to business, beauty, life, and inner emotions. Well, she thought that uh, all the government programs, Medicare, Social Security, etc., were for the weak, and that being selfish was the best thing you could do. Being altruistic and helping others, she thought was evil. By the way, did she take Social Security later in life? Of course! No, I read, uh, she had a lot of influence on me, but uh, I never, I never, she didn't like libertarians. No. She, she, uh, and she was much more militant. I'm, uh, our, our founders of this country were less militant. They didn't want us to be involved militarily overseas. And, and she did, and the objective is now, are pretty strong. But she contributed tremendously. You know, I think, I think uh, Atlas Shrugged might be the second most read book in history. And you know how she was treated with Atlas Shrugged? Mm -hmm. that now. Nobody gave her a reason. Anybody did. No, it was horrible, 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 horrible. It was oh. word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And she still sold it. Millions and millions of copies because it was just telling the truth. People were anxious to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, let's do it. Now let me encourage any of you who have not read Atlas Shrugged to go tomorrow, buy Atlas Shrugged and read it.
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She calls it objective. Yeah. You're right. If you had to met a, a denominator with one way, it would be individualism. But uh, uh, that so many things grew out of that. Of course, her her novel Atlas Shrugged, mm. which is the biggest selling novel in the history of the world, by the way. Right? Yeah, extraordinary. And uh, it it is what it is is <coughs> a thousand words of a thousand pages of ideological fabulism. Yeah. Uh, I, I had to flog myself to read it. <laughs> Have you read Ayn Rand? I skimmed it. I find it abhorrent. I really do. I find Just it, the ideas abhorrent? I find the idea the of maximum narcissism, destructive of any sense of community, basically on the sidle, if you extrapolate it across the globe. Uh, I think she so adversely reacted, and she needed to react to her communist you know, the communist countries where she came from. Uh, she vastly overreacted. But she got a lot of young people reading it, and I want a, a lot of young people to read Only the Super Rich Can Save It.